What you're looking at right here is the brand new Microsoft Surface Pro 8, which is arguably the best two-in-one laptop tablet you can buy because it's actually really good at both of the two. A lot of times we're seeing a compact laptop that folds back and acts like a tablet, or a tablet that kind of pretends to be a laptop. But this device is actually really good at either, competing with the likes of the Dell XPS and the HP Spectre on the tablet side, while also being a really fantastic tablet. So, for example, a lot of tablets that you try to use as a laptop don't have the same kind of power as this. This has an onboard fan, meaning that you're not gonna throttle your processor. It has an Intel i7 processor and it's running Windows, which means that you're no longer confined to mobile apps. Instead, you have the full selection of high productive apps that you'd normally have on a laptop. But at the same time, unlike the laptops like the Dell XPS or the Spectre, this doesn't just have a keyboard that folds around. Instead, the keyboard fully detaches and you have a thin light tablet with slim bezels and a really nice design. So in this video, we're gonna dive into this and talk a lot more about what this does really well, what it maybe doesn't do well, and why Microsoft chose to do what they did. Now, with that being said, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's get into just a physical design tour to show you what this device is really all about. Now, when you buy it, it actually does not come with the keyboard. You have to buy that separately. And the keyboard, interestingly enough, as you might have seen, comes with the Slim Pen 2. So you can see the Slim Pen 2 fits in this nice little slot there, and it magnetically snaps up to the device. Now, you'll see as a theme throughout this entire design, magnets are a huge part of this. Magnets really make everything happen here, from holding the pen in place, to holding the keyboard up, to holding the keyboard onto the device. There's a lot of magnets, and I'm here for it. I like it. I love the magnets on this device. But like I said, the Slim Pen 2, I'll talk a little bit more about the details of what that's actually like to use later on in the video, but looking at the device itself. So let's detach the keyboard. You can see on the bottom, the keyboard magnetically snaps on with those two little wells right there. One of them has some pins because you are able to charge the Slim Pen from your device right here. The, blue, the keyboard is also not connected by Bluetooth, so it really is using those pins right there, and that's nice. You don't have to worry about charging the keyboard or, or anything like that. Now, going around, you'll see on the front, we have a really nice display here. 120 hertz, a 13 inch display, which is larger than the Surface Pro 7. And on top of that, uh, it gives you some pretty slim bezels all the way around. I found that if I'm out in a bright environment or if I'm indoors in a dimmer setting, I really don't have many problems looking at this. It definitely is a little bit more of a glossy finish on the outside, it's not matte by any means, but I can still use it in brighter environments outside. The bezels, I think, are probably about as slim as you're able to get with the current infrastructure. So what I mean by that is the bezels on the right and left are probably as slim as you can get while still having room to hold it with your thumbs not accidentally touching the screen. On the top, you have your camera and your face ID and your microphones, and so without getting rid of those, there's really not a good way to have a, a slimmer bezel on the top. And then the bezel on the bottom is absolutely not a problem at all because as soon as you snap it onto the keyboard and you flip it up into that little kind of angle right there, it totally covers the bottom bezel. So the display on the front, I think Microsoft did a really great job of designing that to be as tight as possible all the way around the edges. Now, looking at the edges beyond that, on the left side, we have a headphone jack, which is great because a lot of tablets don't have that. And a lot of laptops do, which is important for high productive work. Sometimes you need to plug in a headphone jack. Then we have a volume control right next to that, which makes perfect sense. And on the top, we have really nothing. A nice clean top, nothing up there, except you will see a little vent for the speaker and for the fan. Now, as I mentioned, this does have an onboard fan, which means that you're not gonna be throttling that processor nearly as much as you would on something like a fanless tablet. On the right side, you can see we have our power button. We have two Thunderbolt 4 ports, so two USB-C ports that are extremely functional. You can plug in 4K monitors and all types of things like that. And then below that, it looks like an SD card slot. It's not an SD card slot. That's Microsoft's little proprietary plug. They put it on a lot of their devices and it is a way to charge it. And I know you might be thinking like, why would you do that when you could charge with USB-C? I agree, but they like to charge with this, but you can also use it for some other ports as well. Microsoft has some little docks and some little home accessories you can plug into here and then plug in like other monitors or an ethernet cable or something like that. Personally, I think it'd be better off as uh, uh, like an SD card slot, especially because this is such a powerful device. Like I think a lot of people will be creating with this, making videos, editing photos, because it is so mobile, it would be so nice to see an SD card slot there. 
And then if you look back to the front on the right and left side, all the way up on the top, you actually have a almost hidden speaker right there. So you have stereo speakers on this that are pointing right at you. Let's get into a test right now to see how those actually sound. Gen 6, a beautiful smartwatch with a fast, smooth experience and an impressive battery life as well. And so, once again, Fossil's trying to save the smartwatch. In a time where all but three smartwatches are basically on death row, getting left behind with a new update, Fossil swooping in. And then flipping over to the back of this device, you can't forget this, there's some interesting things here. So we have a camera and a microphone on the top, and this is able to actually shoot 4K video, more on why they chose to do that later. And then of course on the bottom we have our little kickstand that props this up either as a tablet standing alone or as a really laptop when you have it connected to the keyboard. And there's actually a hidden thing behind that. You can see if we just take a little SIM removal tool and poke that tiny hole there, this pops off and you can actually expand the storage because the storage on here when you get it is not especially large. So you might wanna buy this and expand it further on down the road. Now, while I really do like the compact design of this, the nature of it is that you will have some compromises. One of them being that if you want a slim device with a powerful processor and a 120 hertz display, you're gonna have to compromise a little bit on the battery life. And this is definitely not the longest battery life out there. You're getting approximately like seven or eight hours of heavy use with this, maybe even less if you're really pushing it. And so that's something you definitely wanna keep in mind. As something that is such a mobile device, it would be nice to see a longer battery life, but again, like I said, you're kind of constrained right now with the current technology. So this device I think is interesting because it's really something that's gonna be great for people who don't know exactly what they wanna do or people who wanna do everything because it is a very versatile device. Like I said, it's going to work as a full-blown laptop and compete with the best out there with not only a comfortable keyboard, a really nice display, and also a compact design, but at the same time, very detachable, very functional, as its own standalone tablet. And so that kind of leads to that question I had before of why would Microsoft put a 4K camera on the back? Because Microsoft typically makes a lot of laptop style stuff and it is kind of strange that you'd have a 4K video camera on the back when you might think, all right, you can scan documents with it, you could maybe record a lecture, but it's kind of a weird angle. But I think really what they're looking for here is that extra versatility. So if you have to take this in the field, if you have to take a video when you're walking around, maybe some type of architectural site or engi uh, environmental engineering, like whatever you might be doing, having a 4K video camera on the back allows us to compete with a lot of other tablets. Now, as a side note, there are other very capable devices for two-in-ones. For example, the iPad Pro, now running the M1 chip on there, might lead you to wonder which of these two is better. And I will actually make a full comparison between this and the iPad Pro and the Galaxy Tab S7 for that matter. So if you wanna see that video, go on down and click that subscribe button so you don't miss it when that comes out. And speaking of the camera, let's actually get into a video test now with both the front and rear facing cameras. All right, so this is the onboard microphone and the front facing camera. If I was in a Zoom call or some type of video meeting, it would probably look and sound something like this. Personally, I think that this is really impressive because unlike a lot of other laptops out there, this at the very least has a 1080p webcam, which I think you can tell it looks a lot better here. So leave a comment below and let me know what you think of this. So this is the rear facing camera. It is by no means the best at handling dynamic range, but it does have a pretty decent resolution being 4K. And overall, I think it would definitely get the job done for most business type stuff. I know I keep mentioning this as kind of a theme in this video, but this device works really well as both a laptop and a tablet. And although it looks and feels a lot like a tablet with the device alone, when you put it onto a keyboard, a lot of keyboards that detach have mushy keys or they sit weird on the table. I think Microsoft has really mastered that. And that is one of the major selling points of this device being such a nice keyboard. There's not a ton of flex. There is some flex, but it's at a great angle. There's backlighting on the keys. The keys have a really ideal travel in my opinion. And it just feels like a nice premium keyboard. On top of that, it houses the slim pen, more on the slim pen in a second, but I found that my typing speed with this was really on par with most other devices. It didn't feel too cramped. Overall, the keyboard on this, I think it did a great job. And you can even hear a little sample right here of what it sounds like. So of course the slim pen. I think it's really crafty that Microsoft hid it down in that, that little folded portion of the keyboard. I think that's a great spot for it. 
And the pen itself is a little different than previous years because it now has a haptic motor in there. And the haptic motor, I think, is an interesting touch because it does give you a little bit more feedback when you're using it and it feels more like you're writing an actual paper but the catch is this. Because you're using Microsoft, and Microsoft Windows has been around for so long, it wasn't made for tablets first. Windows 11 is doing a great job of becoming more ready for tablets, but there's still some quirks in there. So for example, depending on what software you're using, you may or may not have that haptic feedback. I found that you do have it in things like the handwriting to text features, which by the way is weirdly different on different applications, kind of a weird quirk that we have on here, but at the same time, it also works on other things like uh, Snip and Sketch, right? If you take a screenshot and you draw. But weirdly enough, where I didn't feel any haptic feedback was in the Whiteboard app. And so I don't know why, that's literally a shortcut that comes as a default on this device. I don't know why you don't have that working in there. Maybe it is and I'm just not feeling it, but for my testing, it definitely seemed like the Whiteboard did not have any haptic feedback. It also works as a mouse, so whenever you're using this around, if you tap, it gives you a little jolt with this, so it is very satisfying to use, and I think that was a really nice idea to add that you don't see in most other pens. However, for the price, I do wish this pen was made out of a little bit more of a solid material. It feels like it has kind of loose tolerances, like the button on the top feels weird when you click it, you have to push harder than you think, and I mean, it's not bad by any means, and I'm definitely nitpicking here, but personally, for a pro model device and for something that is as expensive as this pen, I just wish it was made out of aluminum or something that was a little bit more premium than this relatively loose tolerance plastic. I don't wanna make it sound like this pen is not a really great device though, because I love how Microsoft really took a different approach on this. Like I said, by having the haptic feedback on there, but also by allowing you to flip it over to the back to erase in a very intuitive way. Rather than hitting a button to switch between writing and erasing, flipping it around just feels so natural and intuitive. You do also have a button on here, both on the finger area and on the top, so you can have shortcuts for different things like opening whiteboard, for example. And the writing with this pen also feels pretty natural. I didn't notice a ton of lag, and recently I have been using both the S Pen on the Tab S7 and the Apple Pencil 2, and this really doesn't feel that different. Okay, so solid design, solid keyboard, pretty decent pen, great cameras, Let's talk about the internals of this, because if you're actually going to compete with the best laptops out there, you need really strong internals. And I found that with this, for the most part, you're getting pretty good internals for the size of this device. This device right here has 256 gigs of storage, it has an Intel i7, and that's an 11th gen G series processor, which is probably the most powerful you're gonna get in a mobile device like this. This also has 16 gigs of RAM, and so that set is going to allow you to do most photo editing, maybe some light video editing, or honestly, maybe some moderate video editing, but it's really not going to be a total workhorse, which you didn't expect it to. A device of this size is more than powerful enough for pretty much any task you're gonna throw at it. And I would argue that it is more powerful than most other two-in-one devices that are anything like this. But of course, the compromise here is not necessarily the hardware, it's not necessarily the specs, it is the price. You're paying a lot of money for a device with these specs. Unfortunately, the price of this device is really high. For the specs I have, this one was $1,600, which is pretty expensive, but the worst part is it doesn't actually come with the keyboard. So I'm not sure who would use this as just a tablet and not get the keyboard. And I guess you could technically get your own Bluetooth keyboard or use the on-screen keyboard, but I think you're missing out on a lot of the experience with this if you don't get Microsoft's signature keyboard, because not only is it a very slim portable keyboard, but it also has that slim pen too on there. And I think that adds a lot to the experience with this and makes this a Surface Pro. So overall, the Surface Pro 8, is it a good buy? Well, I think it comes down to this. If you're looking to only buy a laptop and all you're gonna use this for is a laptop, then keep in mind with this device here, you're compromising a little bit on the battery life and it is a lot more expensive. You can find other options that are a little cheaper that are slightly bulkier and have similar-ish specs at least. But if you are looking to only get a tablet, then again, there are other options that are a little bit more tablet friendly. Like this is running Windows 11, which is getting more optimized for tablet, but you still don't have like a good swipe to go home gesture and things like that. With that being said, anybody who's looking for either a very light, slim, travel friendly laptop or want the best two in one on the market, 
I think this is a clear choice. Not only is it extremely light and extremely thin, it's also very, very powerful. You're able to do all types of work on here if you want to be productive while you're on the go, in an airport, in a train station, coffee shop. This is a very high-end laptop for that. And at the same time, it's extremely light and extremely portable and very capable of being used as a tablet for drawing, for taking notes, for doing anything along those lines. So travelers, students, or just anybody who is not worried about the cost of this, it's a fantastic device. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you think of the Surface Pro 8. Is this something you would buy? And is there anything that you wish it had that it doesn't? As always, if you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing. I'm Michael Bryan. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.